Ook vandaag gaan de protesten in Rusland tegen de mobilisatie door. Niet alleen bij de bevolking, zelfs de propagandazender RT klaagt over de chaos, net als de voorzitters van het Russische parlement. Ondertussen proberen nog altijd duizenden jonge mannen hun gedwongen gang naar het front te ontlopen. En één vluchtweg lijkt aan populariteit te winnen, namelijk Georgië. Een land dat sinds 2008 deels door Rusland wordt bezet en waar de bevolking niet om de komst van al die Russen staat te springen. Met de fiets en een weekendtas de Georgische grens over. Veel Russische mannen vluchten afgelopen dagen uit angst naar het Oekraïnse front te worden gestuurd. Georgië is een van de weinige buurlanden waar Russen zonder visum nog naartoe kunnen en maximaal een jaar als toerist kunnen blijven. De meesten zoeken hun toevlucht tot de Georgische hoofdstad Tbilisi. Net als de 25-jarige Maxim aan het begin van de oorlog al deed. Ik didn't believe that things uh, would be better and it was an emotional decision mostly but I'm like I think it was the right decision. Georgië zit in een spagaat want de relatie met Rusland is op zijn zachts gezegd niet best te noemen. On the level of communication with regular people I feel welcomed but sometimes I see some uh, paintings on the walls and uh, some atmosphere in Telegram chats. En channels uh, where uh, Georgian people like to tell us some of them tell us we're not welcome. Waar nu de Russische mannen de grens oversteken, rolden in 2008 de Russische tanks binnen om de bevolking van de pro-Russische regio's Zuid-Ossetië en Abkhazië zogenoemd te beschermen. Na een korte hevige strijd waarbij honderden doden vielen, kwam er een staak tot vuren en plaatste Rusland er militairen. En nu, 14 jaar later, komen de Russen dus opnieuw. Maar nu met een ander doel. Russian people will not uh, meet any discrimination or uh, the atmosphere or like something unpleasant, unpleasant or something like that. So if they will apply the rules and the culture of the of Georgian of Georgia. Over een half jaar zal Maxims tijd in Georgië verstreken zijn en zal hij verder moeten reizen naar een nieuw land. I just want to say that lots of our people have the feeling of guilt, the feeling of responsibility. And uh, we just do not know what to do with that. But I hope that um, the Dutch uh, government will, uh, will be open to apply Russian, uh, Russian immigrants who do not want to participate in war, who do not want to kill people in, the, in another country. So that's what I want to say. Voor de uitzending sprak ik met Igor Koroptev, directeur van de Georgische tak van Free Russia. Dat is een NGO die Russische politieke vluchtelingen opvangt en beschermt. En ik vroeg hem wat de komst van al deze Russen doet met Georgië. Het is paniek, het is, ik zou zeggen, in de gemeenschap, in de society in Georgia. Het is een threat. Unfortunately, this flow is uncontrollable at the moment, as we see. No one banned. Uh, we, we don't see any like situation that this flow is under control by the government. So society is very angry. Society is very, how to say, um, nervous, and and they expect that some provocations may follow. And uh, situation is actually very, very, uh, how to say, uh, tense. And do you know what sort of people are fleeing Russia? Several groups. First of all, of course, people opposing the war who never supported the war and never supported regime. Second group, people who maybe supported regime, but they don't support the war. And the last group, people who support regime, support the war, but they don't want to go and die for uh, Putin or anyone else. They want to stay far and keep on supporting. I can imagine that the Georgians are most worried about this last group, the people that still support the war. It's a very riskful group to have in any country. As you know, some European countries already said they will not welcome uh, people fleeing from, from mobilization. Some European countries said we will welcome them. So, yes, it's risky. It should be like very, very, very under focus, under radar. And I know that Georgian government and special services are monitoring and focusing on this specific issue, not to have some fifth column in, in Georgia, some uh, hidden supporters of Russian regime. And all this during an ongoing occupation. Well, of course, uh, 
So you have to like uh, remember that Georgia is occupied by Russian Federation and 30 kilometers away from the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi, there are uh, Russian tanks, illegal Russian military bases. And for 14 years already after the war in 2008, uh, Georgia is under permanent threat in hybrid war on behalf of Russia, from Russian side. So uh, it's a real huge challenge for Georgia, security challenge for Georgia. Again, as I said, it's not only people opposing the regime, but also people supporting the regime. Another problem, of course, everyone always remember about Putin's, uh, how to say, agenda to so-called save Russian people in different countries. Uh, he used this narrative many times before invading. So, of course, big number of uh, Russian people, uh, people of the country which occupies Georgia, is a problem. So if the situation is so tense, why doesn't Georgia close the borders? Yeah, society, uh, population of Georgia, they demand closer of uh, the border since the first day when mobilization was announced. Uh, for government, it's a problem because they think that if they close the border, uh, Russia may react in some aggressive way and put some more pressure on them. They don't want it. Uh, their major narrative all these six months, seven months, is not to bring the war to Georgia again. So they do whatever uh, not to provoke the Kremlin. Yeah, so the fear for the Kremlin still influences Russian politics. Thank you very much for this uh, insightful conversation, uh, Igor Kuruptev. Thank you for inviting me.